to the review for 6.5 through 6.7 quiz review. Uh, these are the formulas that you first see on the review, and they will also be given to you just like this during the actual quiz itself. So the properties of logarithms and the inverse properties will be given to you just as you see. You might not use all of these. You might use all of these. It depends on the version of test or quiz that you have. So it's good to know every single one of these. And here we go. So question number one. Expand the logarithm or the logarithmic expression. So when I want to expand something and I'm looking at the properties of logs, you notice that if I go left to right, the actual equation gets bigger. So the product property makes things bigger. The quotient property and the power property, if I go left to right, makes them bigger. So it's like going here to here, here to here, here to here. Now that is how we do the uh, expanding. <clears throat> so in order to correctly expand, we must identify what we want to use. So over here, we're going to use the product property because it's being 7 is being multiplied by x. So just like I said in class, go ahead and write down prod or product property. So when you use the product property, it states whatever is being multiplied, I add them. So log base 3 of 7, and then I add log base 3 of x. That is all I can do when I'm expanding this logarithm. Then when I go move over to the next one, which is number two, number two states, do the same thing, expand it. Well, it looks like number one, and number one, I'm sorry, number two, will be the same thing. I'm going to use product, and in order to use the product, I'm going to do log base three of five plus the log base three of x. There we go. I use the product property to make it bigger. Now, as I scroll through this quiz itself, I uh, will not go back and forth just to make sure you don't freak out and go, oh my god, my eyes. Uh, when we go through the log properties and inverse properties, I'm just going to rewrite, um, I'm just going to write what property we use, and it's up to you to look at it yourself. So, number three, we are going to use the, what we call, uh, the product property because it's being multiplied. And the power property because we have something to the power. And the reason why we use the product first and not the power property is because the 7 is x to the 7, not 3 to the 7. If it was out here, if that 7 was outside, that means it's 7 to the whole thing, 3 and x. But because the 7 is in the inside, just like we have here, we do the product. And then we go to uh, power. So these two are we're going to do here and here, actually. So in order to do the product, we take those two and split it. So log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of x to the 7. Then we use the power property here and go log base 4 of 3 plus 7 log base 4 of x. So we use the product and the power to happily expand this question. So number 4 uses the same exact thing, just different numbers. We're going to do product and then power. Log base 7 of 5 plus log base 7 of x to the third. Then we're going to use the power property and make that three go in front of that, not the whole thing, but just that. So log, oh, log base 7 of 5 plus 3 log base 7 of x. There we go. So this is the 3 and 4. So we use the product and then the power. Now in the 5 and 6, we're actually going to use all three. Now, we have the quotient, we have the power, and we have the product. So those three are we have to use. And you notice what is being divided by on both 5 and 6 is the whole thing on the top is being divided by the whole thing on bottom. That's why I do quotient first. So let's go do quotient. So the natural log of 
3x squared, and the quotient rule says that over top is going to be minus the bottom, natural log of 4. Natural log does not have a base at all. It's just natural log for ln. Now, when I do that, you notice the left side is still not done. We can still do more. And 3 and 4 is kind of a hint on what we can do. So on this side, we can do the product, and it looks like we can also do the power. So on this side, we say the natural log of 3 plus natural log of x squared minus natural log of 4. And then I do the power, which is 2 in front of that. And we do that. Well, not do it. Now do natural log of 3 plus 2 natural log of that minus natural log of 4. There we go. We did all three of them. And the number 6 is the same exact thing, just the the quotient will be done in the beginning, and then the product, and then the power. So I'm just going to take a list and say, yee, 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 let's go in here too. So I'm going to do natural log of 4 minus natural log of 5x to the third. Now with this one, I realize on this side now, I need to do the multiplicate, or the product side property. So natural log of 4 minus natural log of 5 plus natural log of x to the third. Now this is wrong when you write it this way because of two or one thing. Right here, this is saying minus natural log of 5x to the third. So that minus sign actually goes to the whole thing. So when I do the product property, I have to dictate that I know that the whole thing is um, a negative the whole side has a negative in front of it, so I say parentheses. So that takes care of the negative that was in front of here. If I didn't have the parentheses, then this would say negative natural log of 5, and then you add natural log of x to the third. That's not true, because it's negative. This is a whole thing that is negative. So in order for this to be true, I've got to put parentheses around it, and then I can do the power rule right here. Natural log of 4 minus natural log of 5 plus 3 natural log of x. There you go. So those are the things you think. Alright, so then we're going to do a condensing the logarithms. So condensing the logarithms is going basically backwards when it comes to the properties of logs. So I'll go up here to see. So I'm going to actually change the color as well. So let's do it again. So this is saying when I condense, I go from right to left. So I go backwards. So I have something that's being added. I'll multiply it. If I'm being subtracted, I divide them. If I have an and in front or a power in front, I take care of that. So number seven is telling me, hey, I need you to do something first. So my first rule of thumb is always take care of the power first when it comes to the condensing. So there's a power right here and a power right there. So we're going to take care of those two. So power first. When I do that, I have log 4 to the second power minus log x to the third power. So I'm going to evaluate 4 squared and say log 4 times 4 is 16 minus log x to the third. So I'm condensing and I'm condensing those two things with power. Then I do quotient rule because it's being subtracted. When they're subtracted, I say log. The top is going to be 16 minus the bottom, which is going to be x to the third. There is no base to log. The base is actually a 10. We just don't write that because those math nerds tell you, hey, 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 you need to know it's 10. We're not going to write it because we're lazy. So if there's none, doesn't need to be a base. If you want to put a log of base of 10, that works, but why do extra work, right? So that's number seven. So number eight, it looks like the power rule can't be used for number eight, but the quotient rule can. So the quotient rule will be used, and in order to do the quotient rule, we say log top, which is four, over the bottom, which is seven. Okay, so you can leave it like that. You can also evaluate whatever four divided by seven is. Log 
پر و بسبان است Um, and you can even evaluate this whole thing. I'm just not going to go there. You can go there. There you go. There's no reason to evaluate the whole thing. You can if you like, but you don't have to. Number 9. And 10. And 11 and 12. All right. So number 9 says do the same thing. we got to condense it. So we do power first. We search for the power rule to be depicted. Oh, bang. So i got to do the power first. So I have a log. Phase 6 of 3 plus log base 6 of 4 squared minus log base 6 of 9. And this is using the power rule. Now I go left to right and we'll, we'll make this 4 squared to 16. Now because 4 times 4 or 4 squared is 16. And then I go left to right. So in order to go left to right I'm going to have to use the whatever's in the formula for plus which is Product. So I'm going to say log base 6, 3 times 16 minus log base 6 of 9. And then 3 times 16 is going to be uh, 48. Okay, so now that I have that, I need to use the quotient property to condense all the way. So it looks like we're using all three. So log base 6 of 48 over 9. You can evaluate that to log base 6 of 5.33. And we're just going to keep it like that. A big old or there. So either or works for me. Yeah, so this is the same thing with number 10. We're always going to look for power rule first when it comes to condensing. So in order to look at that, we say, oh, 10, squeeze, look at that. And then I do, okay. And when I do that, so we log base 3 out of 5 plus 2 to the third power, which is log base 3 of 2 times 2 times 2 is actually 8 minus log base 3 of 25. We use the power rule first. Then we go left to right. So we're going to use the product rule. So doing the product rule, we say log of base 3 of 5 times 8 minus log base 3 of 25. 5 times 8 is a beautiful number. It's 40. Now I'm going to use the last one, which looks like we got to do quotient. So it's going to be log base 3 of 40 over 25, or log base 3 of 1.6. So we condensed it. So we took 3 and made it into 1, or make 3 or 2 into 1. So that's how you condense things. Always power that thing first. So number 11, so number 11 says to do basically the same thing we've been doing, which is condense, condense, condense. So we do the first thing, which is to do the power rule. So we're going to do the power rule here. So natural log of 3 to the fourth power plus natural log of 2 minus natural log of 16. That was using the power rule again. So 3 to the fourth power. Yeah. Let's see, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 81, so natural log of 81, plus natural log of 2, minus natural log of 16, then I have left to right, it's going to be a uh, brain fart product, <laughs> it's crazy if your brain actually farted, hmm. so natural log of 81 plus natural log of 2, well, how you do that? I gotta do the product property, which means I multiply 81 times 2. And 81 times 2 is 162 minus natural log of 16. And we gotta do the quotient property. Quotient, quotient, quotient. So 162 divided by 16 is gonna equal 
that's the natural log of 10.125. Okay, so those are fine by me. So let's do number 12. Number 12, we're going to do the power, baby. So power rule, we're going to do natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3 to the third power is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Minus natural log of 12. That's the power rule. Then we're going to do the product rule. So natural log of 4 plus natural log of what? 27 times 4. That's 108 minus natural log of 12. Then I'm going to do the quotient rule. And say natural log of 108 over 12 or natural log of 9. There you go. So those are 12 questions on expanding and condensing logarithms. More help? Go to 6.5. 6.5. So if you were in my class, you had a ton of different examples of 6.5. A good study tip if you're still struggling and you've already done all the work, why don't you just take the questions that you already answered, put them on a separate sheet of paper, and quiz yourself. Um, doing more problems is the best way to understand uh, how to do things and what ways you do the rules. So power, product, quotient, quotient, quadratic power, all those things. All right, onward to what we call 6.6. .6. So 6.6 .6 is 13 through basically 22. So number 13, we want to rewrite stuff, okay? So over here in 13, you notice that there's 1 over 25. So the properties of equality for exponential equations, which we nicknamed P <laughs> in my class, <laughs> silly, silly, silly person. So we nicknamed this P because this is property of equality for exponential equation. States that those two bases, so right here, need to be the same. And they're not, clearly. So how do I rewrite the this thing so it matches this thing? Well, we want to go to a 5. So how do I get that? Oh, interesting. I can write down 1 over 5 squared, because 5 squared is actually 25. Now, that's not quite the same base, because it's 1 over 5 squared. So the properties of exponents states that I need to do 5 to the negative 2 if I were to make it a whole number. And if that's the case, that's totally fine, and you have to, at this point, integrate this into those two. And then you'll see the magic occur. So your 5 to the x is equal to 5 to the negative 2x plus 4. So the bases are now the same. And if the bases are the same, we say by Felicia, and we have x is equal to negative 2x plus 4. I'm going to add 2x, or sure, let's drop it like a and add 2x. So 3x is equal to 4. Divide by 3, divide by 3, I get x is equal to 4. That's how you use the properties of equality for exponential equations to your advantage. And that's how you get an x. Looking at number 14, we notice that we want to get to a 4. It looks like this whole thing right here can be written as 1 over 4 squared or 4 to the negative 2. So let's rewrite that. 4 to the x is equal to 4 to the negative 2. x minus 1. Distribute into these numbers. 4 to the x is equal to 4 to the negative 2x plus 2. Look at that. The bases are the same. Bye-bye. And then I get x is equal to negative 2x plus 2. Uh, and then I'm going to drop it like it's high. And I'm going to bring the x to the left side. So we're splitting the x's in the numbers, right? So plus 2x, plus 2x, 3x is equal to 2. And then I divide by 3, divide by 3x is equal to 3rds. 
This is how you solve the equation that we gave you. So this was used uh, the property of equality. So property of in property of equality with exponential equations was used to make it to get to the answer. Now the next thing we're going to look at is fifteen. Fifteen can be done in a way at which we look at the inverse property. More specifically, the inverse property that states our base b of b to the x is equal to x. That means if I have something that has a base and it's to a power of something that we want, which is for us x, we introduce a log base b, which is the same base that we have in the problem. So over here, for number 4, our base is a 4. So in order for that set x to drop, you're going to do a log base 4 of 4 to the x to both sides. So log base 4 to 28. So notice this matches. We just inputted uh, what we wanted to do because now with this rule, this inverse property, I go boop, and then the x outputs or whatever's up here. And for us, it's going to be x is equal to log base 4 of 28. There you go. You solved it. And if you want to go a little bit further, you just put it in the calculator. x is equal to 2.40, I believe. And there you go. So this, those two are fine by me. When you do a x is equal to log base 4 of 28, that's fine. Or you can evaluate it yourself and say x is equal to 2.40 or 48. Um, so let's see if I have it up here. Oh wow, look at all that. There it is. Log base 4 of 28 right here is actually yeah, 2.40. So I'm just rounding by two decimal places. Let's clear all these. Cool. I did that, dude. Perfect. So log base 4 of 28. Yeah, done. Okay, so now we're going to look at 16. So 16 looks like the same rules will apply. We're going to make a log base 3 on both sides. Log base 3, 3 to the x is equal to log base 3 of 42. Now when I introduce that, this goes whoosh, and I get x is equal to log base 3 of 42. So log base 3 of 42 is 3.40 and there you go and there you go alright now I'm going to go to number 17 okay so number 17 states we need to do, uh, we need to get this top part down. So if I have a base of a 4 and I have something on the top that I want to come down, I introduce a log base of the same base that we have to both sides. So I'm going to say log base 4 of 4, 3x minus 9 is equal to log base 4 of 1. The reason why I use that inverse property that we just did, which is log base 3 b to the x is equal to x. So this goes away. I mean, the x relieves, uh, relieves, it shows itself. So for us, that x is that stuff on top. So you go, and we go 3x minus 9 is equal to whatever that is. So if I plug in log base 4 of 1, let's evaluate it. Log base 7 of 4 of 1 is actually 0. So we need to do that. 0. Still want to solve for x. I'm going to add 9. 3x is equal to 9. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. We get x is equal to 3, 3, 3. 3, 3, 3, 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So use that inverse property to unlock the greatness that we just did. Number 18 says to do that. 6 to the 3x plus 12. So I'm going to introduce the same base. Log base 6 of 6. 3x plus 12 is equal to log base 6 
uh, 1. This so goes away, the 3x plus 12 is equal to whatever that is. I wonder what it is. So I get 6 of 1. Bang, bang, chicken wing. When I get 6 of 1, it is 0. Then I subtract 12, subtract 12, 3x is equal to negative 4. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x is equal to negative 4. Bang, bang, chicken wing. Number 19. Number 19 says to do uh, the same thing, or uh, not same thing, the uh, inverse property. So one of the inverse properties is b, log base b of x is equal to x. So it means if we have this, we introduce the base of b to cancel it out. So for us, our base is 5, so we're going to actually put a 5 underneath it. So 5 to the log base 5, x plus 3 is equal to 5 to the uh, 5 squared. So in order to do this with this rule, you need to introduce a b, which for us our base was 5. And once we did that, we put it on the bottom left corner of both, because this goes away and what's exposed is x plus 3. And this is 5 squared. And 5 squared is actually 25. And then if I subtract 3, subtract 3, x is equal to 22. Alright. So, the same rule will apply here because we have a log base 3 of x minus 2. So in order to uh, take care of this, I've got to do 3 in the bottom left corner, 3 in the bottom left corner. Bang, x minus 2 is equal to 3 to the 4th power which is x minus 2 is equal to 81, add 2, add 2, x is equal to 83. And there is you go. That is using that inverse property. Now, ooh. now 21 and 22. So 21, you would think you could use the logarithmic equality things we worked on in class in 6, 6, but you can't because there's a 2 in front of it. And 2 in front of 21 and 22, actually. So in order to get this log right here by itself, you've got to take care of that 2 and throw that 2 right there. So we're going to use a power property and say log x squared equals log. 2x plus 8, cross them out, x squared is equal to 2x plus 8. This is the property of log e, uh, equivalent, oh my gosh, yeah, I forgot the rest of it, it's the property of log equality equations, I don't know, I'm sorry, but if you want to know, just see me in class and I'll tell you, I just forgot it. Uh, property of logs where it says if the logs are matching on both sides, which they were for us, you just take it away. And then in order to use Desmos nicely, we subtract 2x, subtract 8, eight or x squared minus 2x minus 8, and then plug it in Desmos. So once you plug it in Desmos, you actually get, let's see if I plug it in. Uh, you get x is negative 2 and x is 4. So those are your answers. So this is where it crosses the x axis. So your graph looks like kind of like this. And this right here is when x is equal to negative 4. This right here, x is equal to 4. I say negative 2. So those are the two coordinates we care about. So when we look for solutions, we want x is equal to something. We don't care about anything else. So if that's the case, we have to check and make sure that it works. Now, let me just kind of borrow something here. We're going to, and I'll say this, this. So while we check, let's check the first one which is x is equal to negative 2. 
So when we do negative 2, we plug in 2 log negative 2. 2 log negative 2. And once you plug that in, you're going to realize 2 log negative 2 is actually undefined. So because it's undefined, x is, not, x is equal to negative 2 is not a solution. So we can't do that. So then we move on to the next one and say 2 log of 4. So x is equal to 4. And once we plug that in, we have to make sure the other side looks the same, which is log 2 times 4 plus 8. So if these two equal each other, we are rolling, rolling, rolling. So it looks like 2 log 4 is this. 2 or log 2 times 4 plus 8 is that. Looks like they're the same. It's like 1.2. Uh, 1.2 and 1.2. So those equal each other. Because they equal each other, x is equal to 4 is your answer. And the only answer. So you must check to see if it's actually the answer every time. Uh, because that's just the way it is. Because sometimes they both can be the answer, they might both not by be the answer, one might be the answer, the other might be the answer. We don't know. Okay? So we're going to do the same thing here. Long. x squared is equal to long. x plus 30. We want to take out those logs with the properties of equivalency. x plus 30. We subtract x, subtract 30, so we get x squared minus x minus 30. x is going to equal x is going to equal, well it crosses the x-axis at negative 5 and 6. So I'm going to check when it's negative 5. So 2 log negative 5 is actually going to be 2 log negative 5 undefined. Therefore, x, is, x equals to negative 5 is not a solution. So we're going to check and say 2 log of 6 is equal to, and oops, log of 6 plus 30. Is equal to now let's see 1.5 yay yay x equals six is your answer. So let us do number twenty-three. So 23 and 24, if you're using Desmos, it says write an exponential function, y is equal to abx, uh, ab to bx, whose graph passes through the points. So in this section, we're going to use y1, squiggly, ab to the x1. So that is the default coordinates that we'll use. So when you put your table in Desmos, you want to make sure x is this, y is this, x is this, y is that. So when we plug that in, let me see if I plug it in. There's boom. When I plug it in, you notice x1, y1, 1, 6, 3, and 4. So even if I expose these dots, it doesn't really matter. What we want to do is put the x y1, x1. So you see y1 is here. And then A, B, and the X one is right there. So it looks exactly like the formula I gave to you here. So make sure you notice that X is in the exponent position. And if that is the case, then we look down here and say A is 2, B is 3. So if that's the case, we're going to use the same format and say Y is equal to A, which is 2, times B to the X. Remember, only B is to the X. So we say 3 to the x. There we go. That's the function that a graph passes through. So once you give me 1 and 6 and a 3 and 54, plug it into a table, and then put in that formula in right here, and you get your answer. Now 24, if I continue down Desmos, will be y2x2, because that's the second pair of stuff I'm going to put into a table. 
So when you look at my Desmos, see that is x2, y2, which is 4, 1, 6, 62, 5, 4, 86. So because it's x2 and y2, you just got to be very careful that when you put the actual equation, it's y2 and x2 as well. That's the only thing that changes. The formula looks exactly the same, and you still look for a and b. So it looks like our a is again 2 and our b is again 3. That means if I plug it in, is y is equal to 2, 3 to the x. Will they always be the same? No, definitely not. They just got lucky. That 24 looks like 23. But the big takeaway with 24, just like what we saw here, is that because I have x2, y2, these have to match my actual formula. And if they don't match it up either in the actual table, and then uh, you can even match it up here as well. And there we go. So just like the first one, we go down to 25 and 26, and this is right the exponential model, same exact way, y1, squiggly, a, b to the x1. Uh, you're going to put these into a formula. Notice this is your x, this is your y, this is your x, this is your y. And let's do 25 and 26. So 25, I have x3 and y3. And then I scroll down, I do y3 and x3, just like you see here. My a is that number, so decimal. We're just going to go to two decimal places. So my a is going to be 1.42. My b is going to be 1.12. So if I plug that in, it's going to be y is equal to 1.42 times 1.12 to the x. Yes, these parentheses are very necessary. Because if you don't have them, that means you're going to multiply these two together and then raise it to the x. Super wrong. These are exponentials, so you want to make sure that only one of those are to the x power. Number 26 is probably is the same way, but you might have guessed with the trend we have now, this is actually going to be my x4 and y4. So here they are, y4, x4, 4200.9. It is 4200, B is 0.9, so plug it into the formula, and the formula is in the question above, 0.9 to the X. Last but not least, oh boy, 27. It's 27, so these are the height of a tree increases with age, at the time of planting the tree is one years old, so you can tell so this right here is the year, so 1, 4, 6, 10, 12, 14. H is actually your height, so these are the heights of the tree. So you can see the tree gets bigger and bigger as uh, the actual um, years go by. So use a graphing calculator, and you're going to use this format. Okay, so this format is a log or natural or log function. So it's going to be 1, right, y. 1 squiggly a plus b natural log x1. So same thing, plug in the values, plug in the values, and you're going to get an a and a b. So this one for us, or for me, is x5, y5. So the only thing changes in the formula is y5, x5. Once you plug in this with the squiggly, it's going to be 5.31 and 7.82. So A is equal to 5.31, B is equal to 7.82 because I rounded. And then if I plug it into that formula, the Y is equal to, because it's asking for a model, I say Y is equal to 5.31, 7.82 to the uh, natural law, oops, 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 plus, 7.82 natural log of x. Last but not least, for b it says when it's 3 years old, what is your height? Meaning plug in x is equal to 3. Plug that in to this formula. So if I do that, y is equal to 5.31 plus 7.82 natural log of 3, I'm going to have the y is equal to something. So, Plug it in, 13.9, 13.9, and it looks like H is measured in feet, so it's 13.9 feet.
Yes, we must write feet. I want to know the actual measurement. Okay, otherwise it'd be 13.9 cats, and I have no idea how tall that is. You may know what 13.9 cats is, but I don't. So there you go. This is all of 6.5 through 6.7. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.